This program is brought to you by Emory University. Good afternoon. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today to talk about a very, very important area called pre-retirement. So you're thinking about retirement. Ah, I imagine a lot of thoughts come to mind when that is posed to you. And so today, in my brief time with you, I am going to cover a number of areas. I would like to ensure that in your packet, your folder, uh, you have a brochure about the faculty staff assistance program. And this brochure will outline all of the services we provide through, as we call it, the FSAP. Uh, you also have a handout for the PowerPoint presentation I am going to be making today. In addition to an evaluation form, because I would appreciate your feedback, and both the PowerPoint presentation and the evaluation is located on the right side of your folder. And then on the left side of the folder, I have some resource material that I will be referring to, particularly when I get to the area of talking about some planning activities for you to embark upon as you're thinking about this journey of pre-retirement planning. So my presentation is going to focus on some of the transitions related to pre-retirement. Those things we call the psychosocial and the emotional considerations. So often, when the term pre-retirement comes forward, we think about what? The money aspect. Uh, but there are so many areas to entertain as we think about pre-retirement. And so in my time with you, I'm going to cover six primary objectives. Now don't get sleepy yet. You say six objectives, that's a lot of objectives. I promise I'll go through them at a fairly rapid pace and then I'll entertain questions in case some area is not totally clear. I do want to talk with you about some of the issues and the stressors that may be relevant at retirement. I also would like to review what we term the stages of retirement. It is important to also understand the processes of managing this thing called a retirement transition. Do you know that there are also some retirement coping strategies that have been well researched? And then very importantly, I'll talk about some strategies for helping you to cope effectively with the psychosocial and the emotional impact of retirement. And then lastly, I'm going to encourage you to have a comprehensive plan for retirement. Now you may already be saying, a plan for retirement? And I'm planning the financial side, do I have to go beyond that? I thought my last strategic plan was some time ago. Do I have to do this as well for my own retirement? Well, it is going to be strongly encouraged that you have a plan. Because so oftentimes, <coughs> We may have a vision for what we're going to do short term with retirement. For example, you may say the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw away my alarm clock. <laughs> well, that's an easy one. You throw it away and that's it. So then what's next? And so that's why we want to talk about the what's next. Retirement is clearly viewed as a milestone. And then you may say, well, what exactly is a milestone? Well, if we look at the formal definitions, we can clearly see that that milestone may be just a post at the side of the road. And you know, if you've ever gotten into things like running or walking, and you wanted to do a five mile walk, and you see the first one saying one mile, and then you go to the second mile mark, those things carry a lot of meaning. Because sometimes when you finally get to the fourth mile mark, you can start to feel a celebration and exuberation. So that carries a lot of significance. Or a milestone may be defined as a significant event in your life. And we certainly can't identify many significant events 
we have already had in our lives. Uh, for example, you may look back and say, when I graduated from college, that was a significant event. When I finished my higher level degrees, that was significant. Marriage, the birth of a child, the first child, the birth of a grandchild, and that list could go on for those significant events. Now, I pose to you the question, what is your personal style for managing milestones? As you look back on the milestones in your life, do you find some characteristic patterns? Do you find that you have been one that embraced change and different milestones in your life? Or do you find that characteristically you've resisted some of those arrivals of different milestones? Those types of characteristics will certainly have an impact in terms of how you perceive and manage retirement. It is without a doubt that our perceptions of what any given milestone represents <coughs> will play a very important role in how it is approached and managed. So how you perceive retirement will be quite significant. There is what might be perceived as the blank slate of retirement. It is a phase in life where one moves from what could be structured time to unstructured time. And what an adjustment. Uh, when many of us may have been very accustomed to a work day from sometimes nine to five, sometimes from can to can't. You know the can'ts when you just have to get to fall over on the table? But it's still structured that you have to finish a project or you have to finish a major endeavor. That may be all a part of the structured time. And then you can think about retirement being the time in your life in which you can create your own future. How about that? I hear some people say, mm hmm. That can be the opportunity when you say, okay, I've been structured for. 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and now I have an opportunity that awaits me when I can figure it all out for myself. And so that blank slate can certainly be transformed into great opportunity. There are several pre-retirement issues identified, however, Moving from that structured to unstructured time can certainly create major adjustments. It is an adjustment to a new lifestyle, but it's also an adjustment to a new identity. So often we are identified by what we do in our occupation. When was the last time you went to an event or a party and you were just perusing around that environment, and you happened to meet someone that you've never met before, and you introduce yourself, and you said, hi, I'm Marilyn Hazard Weinberger. Hi, I'm John Doe. And what's the next question that could possibly come forth? <laughs> there you go, what do you do? <laughs> and it's going to be then a transition to move from, well, I'm a licensed psychologist, to I'm a retiree. And I do what I want every day. I feel kind of excited about that. <laughs> so it is a new period of life with a new identity. And sometimes many of us will have to think about the transition to that new identity as we leave the career or the occupation behind. Another important pre-retirement issue does relate to one's health. Uh, we certainly hope that everyone who embarks upon retirement will enjoy the healthy lifestyle so that he or she can be totally fulfilled with any energy or adventure that they choose to undertake. 
But in order to fully undertake those issues, we must be very cognizant about our health. And that is why for many pre-retirement planning, it is encouraged that you get that health and wellness checkup and that you have a wellness program in place that will certainly help to sustain in that area. We also have to think about the issue of the home and the environment. Is your present home going to be your retirement home? Are you planning to relocate? If so, where is the relocation going to be? Will that relocation work well for you? If you are moving to a house, to a smaller home, to maybe a townhouse or a condominium, how do you envision that transition? Who's going to be in that environment with you? Do you have a spouse or partner? Do you have pets? How will this be different? And then what will be your leisure activities? Will you have the same activities that you've had over the past years? So you're a golfer, and you can't wait to golf every day. Could you imagine getting tired of golfing? Yes, okay, so you do it for two weeks, and you say, I've never had enough of this. So oftentimes, we have to really think about a smorgasbord of leisure activities to be involved in. Because no matter how fulfilling it may be when we finally have a chance to do it on a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, it can, in time, start to lose its enthusiasm and excitement for us. Then next, are you going to have a retirement career? When I presented this at a previous forum, someone said, having a retirement career doesn't go together. <laughs> and, and here we pose the question, do you envision working part-time? Do you envision volunteering? What is going to be that option in the career area? And then lastly, what about your family? How is it going to be if you're home all the time? <laughs> I want you to ask your significant other that question. <laughs> I recall working with a couple in my private practice, and they came in a few months after one of them had retired. The other one had already retired, and she said, he needs a job. <laughs> he gets on my nerves being home all day because he gets up in the morning with a plan of what happens to take place all day, and that really does bother me, so he needs to get out of the house. And so we do have to think about the impact of retirement on family as well as relationships. So here are a few personal identity questions for you to ponder as you think about this transition. Who are you now? What are the roles that define you pre-retirement? Who will you be after retirement? Do you envision new roles? And what will you need to do in order to transition those roles? How do you define yourself in terms of what you value, in terms of what you believe to be your true identifiers? Has work been a primary identifier for you? And if so, how will you view yourself as contributing work when work is no longer there for you? A question may be, will I still matter? And how will I impact others in my environment? So some very key questions for you to answer in some of the leisure time that you have as you're planning your, your retirement. There are a number of stressors associated with retirement, and research has identified a pretty long list. As many of us have would surmise with that focus on the money area, that money can be a significant area. And for many individuals with this question, they ask, do I have enough money to live the lifestyle that I envision in my retirement? 
Will I need to consider other options such as retirement part-time, uh, working part-time after retirement? So what are the money challenges? This area can get to be pretty complicated. As uh, we were talking a little bit earlier before the session started, uh, it was indicated, and I'm going to steal the thunder from that though, uh, it was indicated that it used to be that you had one retirement plan, but now you can have multiple money-related retirement plans. I mentioned health as a significant area, but I also want to indicate that retirement carries significance and can be a source of stress in terms of how you perceive aging and the aging process. If you look back over time, did you ever have a moment where something may have stunned you about your aging process? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody can relate to that. I'll, I'll tell you my favorite one that stunned me. I was shopping at Kroger and got to the cash register. You know the story, don't you? And the young lady said, uh, you, you want the senior discount? And I said, senior discount? What do you mean, senior discount? And I was like, oh my gosh, I must I'm looking old here. What does that mean? And I walked away and I said, no. I don't want it. And I got to my car and it was like, oh wow. I am starting to make a transition. I do look different. I went home, I got my photographs from the last year, and I put them all up. For a moment, I was in denial. I don't look that old. This was just a young person who just made a weird remark. But trust me, I got over it, and now I ask for my senior discount. <laughs> and so that transition has certainly uh, occurred. It is important to search for meaningful activities. Okay. I have certainly worked for many, worked with many clients making this transition, and when they have that blank slate with nothing on that slate, they struggle with what is meaningful. And so it is encouraged that this meaning is created very early. I talked about the work in retirement. I talked about even marital status. And if you have a partner or a spouse, or do they have health challenges? Do they have money factors that may be considered as well? So what will need to be in place as you consider those type of marital issues? We also have the issue of whether or not there is going to be a stress factor related to caring for other family members. And this caring can relate to grandchildren, but also may relate to aging parents as well. And then the relocation aspect, whether it's going to be to a different location in, within a city, or whether your vision is to head south, 75 south, go to Florida, oh yeah, and sunshine every day. Now I'm going to say that 75 degree weather all year for some may be a challenge. And you may find yourself just needing to see some snow sometimes. And so that may be a plan A to head to Florida, but you also may need a plan A, B, B because believe it or not, even sunny days, 75 degrees every day can get to be a little boring. Convince you of that in January, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are five stages related to retirement. The preparation stage begins at least two years prior to retirement. That is when you actually develop a plan. How is my retirement going to look? Uh, that's the period where you review benefits review finances and retirement funds, draw up wills, determine your power of attorney, of attorney, review beneficiaries, do many logistical things such as applying for or renewing your passport, talking to Social Security, getting a health checkup, reviewing your interests 
your passions, and your hobbies. Letting go of the identity that has defined you primarily related to work. And then preparing for a celebration. A celebration of looking forward to a new stage in life. A celebration of what do you want this to look like. So often, many people envision that day that they retire. I can't wait to pack up that office. I'm going to have my little roll away bag, and I'm going to skip down the hall. <laughs> but plan the celebration a bit longer than that, where it goes beyond just that day to several days and weeks and months thereafter. Then, in that celebration time, plan how you will enjoy the freedom. Are you going to learn new skills? Are you going to volunteer? Are you going to fix up your house? Are you going to exercise? <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't exercise on, on any given time, so why don't you exercise in retirement? That's going to be a good part of that health and wellness aspect. How are you going to manage your change and your stress? Uh, do you plan to meet new friends? Uh, will you cultivate old friendships? Do you envision improving the spiritual aspects of your new life? How will you emerge with your new identity? And then retirement comes, and it can be the honeymoon period where, ha, I finally made it. It's like crossing that finish line when you have just accomplished one of those great milestones. And the honeymoon can last for weeks to even years. But then in that next stage, we may have that reality. Like, oh, OK, so this is it? <laughs> really? Really? Now, if you think about, uh, uh, many of you know teenagers. And you know, you, you look at how they envision milestone birthdays. You ever had an adolescent say, I can't wait until I get 16. And then they're 16, and they'll say, oh, really? <laughs> and then they can't wait until they get 21. And they'll be fully grown. And then 21 comes. And they say, really? Is that it? And sometimes those are the same questions we may ponder as the reality of retirement sets in. Is this it? Really? Is this what I looked for all of my adult life? Hmm. And that is when we move into that stage of reorientation. So, okay, I've had this stage to occur. I've got some exposure to what retirement looks and feels like. Okay, I've had these ebbs and flows. Now, what do I really want to create that's meaningful? And that's where you may actually move from that plan A to plan B to now plan C. Because now you can really figure out how you want your retirement to look. Now, if we look around the room, there will be a multitude of different coping styles for retirement. Uh, we're going to have some people who will continue to use their existing skills and their interests. Some people, as we call adventurers, will start completely new endeavors. You may be thinking about something you've never tried before, but when you get the opportunity with that additional to unstructured time, you are going to embark upon these endeavors. We have some of you who will be searchers. You're going to try some new options, and you're going to go through a period of just trial and error. I think I'll try this. I've always wanted to go to this place where they did puzzles. I've always wanted to go to the place where they did wine tasting and crafts at the same time. And so you try a lot of different things before discovering that this really works for me. And we're going to have those that we call the uh, easy gliders. Yeah, maybe some of you in the room who just want to enjoy your unscheduled time. 
and just let each day unfold. Some call it just go with the flow. <laughs> then we have involved spectators. I don't want to dive in. I care about everything related to the world, everything that I believe in as my passion. But I don't want to get overly active. I'm going to be less engaged. I'm kind of on the sidelines. And then we have what's identified as retreaters. I just want to say time out and disengage from life for a while. Those may be the people for two weeks. All you do is get up and get something to eat and go back to the bed, <laughs> go to the sofa, and click that remote. And so there are many different styles, and what we do find is that most people will use a combination of coping styles. And that is important to have a combination of skills and styles that you will implement. As you're coping with these transitions, there are some things to ponder even further. What would be the role of family and even work in your life as you retire? What has been the role of family and work in your life as you've worked? What is the timing of your retirement? When is a good time? And what defines it as a good time? The degree to work, that work has been satisfying, will be a factor that will impact your transition. If work has been all that has been satisfying, then it's going to take more planning to identify other areas. Planning, I know, I've emphasized many, many times, and I emphasize that once again, because the degree to which the transition occurs effectively is going to depend upon the planning that you engage in. Your expectation about retirement, is it now pretty glorified? Have you looked at how the honeymoon stage may transition to that reality stage? And will your expectations shift? Coping will also be contingent upon the meaningful life that you have established, even during your work life. And again, your health and sense of financial well-being. So I will reiterate, take that time to plan. Utilize a holistic approach. Think about every aspect of life. For the emotional aspect, spiritual, health, financial, to think about what needs to happen in each one of those arenas. Remember that retirement is a process. It's not a single event. It's not just that day. But it is a lifelong journey after work. And recognize the value of that pre-retirement planning. We can start now with leaving the uh, old situation behind. And that doesn't mean that you retire while you're working. But perhaps looking at cessation planning, what do you need to do for others in that environment to carry on the things that you have created in the work world? And then we see that there is moving to a neutral zone, where you're kind of in between that which has been your identity related to the old you, <coughs> and maybe even trying out some new realities. You may take extended vacations to see how, what it's like to actually be away from work and to have unstructured time for an extended time period. And then emerging from that neutral zone means having a new beginning, a beginning that you can start to celebrate. It is encouraged that you develop a proactive attitude as you begin the pre-retirement transitioning process. It is a change. Think of the change as a challenging but a normal part of life. <coughs> Note that there will be setbacks, but see these as just temporary. 
and always areas that you can resolve. Know that you can succeed with whatever challenges occur. And some of these may be unexpected and even with the best laid plans, unplanned. Build relationships and have strong support systems. Look at expanding that network of people. Because one thing we see is that as you look at your network of supported individuals, they too may start to have different challenges and you may then need to pull upon a wider network for the different things that you may have in your life. Look at the commitments towards family and friends. I talked about the support system. I want to emphasize don't be afraid to ask your support systems for help. <coughs> So often our old identity meant that we were the helpers. We did everything at work, we did everything for the family, we did everything in the community, but in this process with a new identity, there may be times when we will need to call upon someone for that help. And this can be as simple as, I've always carried my grocery bags out, that's not a problem. But as time goes on, it may be that you may need a little bit of help with that bag instead of struggling to carry it along, because that's what I used to do. And don't forget, yeah, sometimes we need that kind of support, right? <laughs> I see someone say, just remember that, right? <laughs> and don't forget to relax and have some fun. Identify what fun feels like for you. I move on now to look at some time options to consider. I go back to that question of, do you want to consider work as an option, part-time? You know, I, I'll share with you, sometimes I've walked in Walmart and imagined being a greeter. <laughs> it seems like, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long that would last, but you know, it seems like a fun, friendly thing to do. Uh, doesn't require much. Okay, right. <laughs> so maybe I better reconsider that. Do you want to consider volunteerism as an option? What about traveling? Have you envisioned the trips you might want to take? Do you have some projects that you want to do on a seasonal basis? Even seasonal work. Again, ponder these questions to determine what is meaningful to you. But do find meaning. Do Establish objectives. Be open. Try new experiences. Keep that trial and error going until you find the right fit. And be very willing to be flexible and to reorganize your life. Ultimately, that right fit can come to fruition. Don't be boxed in. Shift the paradigm. Look outside the box. <coughs> Prepare for something new. This is an exciting time of life. Don't let the past be the only thing that defines you. Don't be that title that perhaps you held on to for so long be your defining pathway. And never succumb to the belief that you are the position that you hold. Imagine when you are going to this social gathering, what you're going to say when someone should ask you, well, what do you do? Play with that for a moment. And for a moment, just take that deep breath and just explore your primary dream for What does that look like for you? How do you feel as you see the elements of that dream? Are you fulfilled? Are you excited? I think it's so very important to create every aspect of that visualization. <laughs> to know 
what it is you are going to put on that blank slate. And by way of that summary, you are utilizing positive thinking, you're going to acknowledge your strengths and your achievements. This is a journey, and so small action steps will be encouraged. <coughs> you will embark upon new interests and skills, an active social life, evaluating time options, and managing the stress and change effectively. In your folder, I have included on the right side a number of aids for you to utilize when you are developing your retirement plan. There is one handout entitled Creating a Purposeful Retirement. Many questions to ponder. I encourage that in your leisure time, and we all have so much leisure time, right? <laughs> that you go through these various questions. And use these questions to then develop your retirement action plan. There is a handout that talks about in this planning process, you identify what you want to be your core focus. You specify the goals that you want to achieve in your retirement. You can explore those goals. You can then develop small action steps that you want to implement to achieve those goals. And it's very important to look at what obstacles you may encounter when you are implementing these various action steps. How will you overcome any obstacles? And then what is your start date for your action plan? How will you monitor your progress? And then there's another handout that actually gives you the chance to identify every task with your start date, and you can check yourself and monitor yourself by going through and indicating the status of that plan. I hope that I have given you much information to ponder as you are thinking about retirement. And at this junction, I will entertain any questions that you may have. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.